Hi there, I'm Andy Bear. I'm a technology manager with Panasonic Electronic Materials. I'm very happy and excited to be here today and talk to you about some exciting new technology that's coming out of Japan. The scientists in Japan are making some uh, exciting new discoveries that I think are going to change all of our lives going forward. So to start, think about the world. Think about all the things that are around us. Think about the cars we drive. Think about the people you know. So you think about those three things, the world, the transportation that we use, and the people we interact with, and then think about electronics as you know them today. So the world, not flat and rectangular. Transportation, cars, trains, planes, automobiles, not flat and rectangular. People, definitely not flat and rectangular, but our electronics, they tend to be flat and rectangular. That's not always the case, but in general is the case. And the question arises, why is that? Why are our electronics flat and rectangular? And that's primarily because that's how we can make them. That's the way that we've evolved to make them in high volume manufacturing. Well, that paradigm is starting to change a little bit. Um, there's new uh, devices, new demands, new uh, applications coming out in terms of uh, aerospace and gaming and sensors and medical devices and wearables that demand a new form factor out of our electronics. We're looking to try to make electronics more pliable, conformable, do we even say stretchable, to uh, be more organic, uh, move more easily, be more aesthetically pleasing, and in fact maybe be functional and integrated into the uh, devices uh, and panels and parts of our devices that we that we have. So as we move toward uh, more conformable, more stretchable electronic form factors, that's going to demand some new materials. We just can't get there with conventional materials uh, that we have in our toolbox right now. And that's what the scientists at uh, Panasonic have been working on, been working on making novel new stretchable circuit materials, which really can enable new devices for us going forward. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. So with these new form factors that we have, we have new demands uh, for performance. For instance, textile integrated electronics. Previous versions of electronics really never had to survive uh, wash and dry cycles. That just wasn't a consideration. In fact, if you wore a, wear a wearable, you took it off. Um, but now as we're doing uh, textile integrated electronics, there's new demands on terms of uh, water resistance, moisture resistance. Think about sensors out in the world, uh, chemical resistance, UV resistance. So there's new demands on uh, that weren't there previously with uh, traditional generations of electronic devices. So the, if we go back and let's, let's do a little bit of a history. So you remember uh, that uh, traditional circuit boards started mm, sometimes, let's just say in the 60s, and they were rigid and hard and multi-layered and stacked up. And that technology continues to this day, just getting incrementally better and better and better. In fact, Panasonic is leading the uh, charge in terms of making next generation electric circuit board materials. But then about in the 80s, people started making flexible circuits and they made primarily on uh, polyamid or maybe a LCP polymer. And these, these were circuits that could be flexed somewhat and they would help with different form factors, help maybe move into a smaller space. And then uh, come along to the uh, mid 2000s, people started investigating uh, stretchable and conformable circuits. But the problem with uh, the current materials that we had for stretchable and conformable circuits was that the existing materials were uh, not very durable at all. They were thermoplastic materials, meaning they were subjected, uh, they didn't hold up well to uh, exposure to heat or chemicals or environmental. Well, the scientists and engineers back in uh, Kodoma, Japan, developed a proprietary and unique uh, chemistry uh, polymer chemistry, thermosetting polymer chemistry that now has the potential to make very durable 
and stretchable and conformable uh, circuit materials. And so this will open up a whole new world of uh, electronics that can be worn on the body, for instance, medical devices, health monitoring, sports, conformable devices like in uh, automotive, maybe conformable displays, foldable bendable displays, sensors that can go everywhere. And another benefit of this uh, polymer system that's been developed out of Japan is in fact, it is uh, scalable. So these can be done either in panel form or roll to roll printing using existing manufacturing techniques. So uh, we don't need to incorporate uh, brand new manufacturing. So some of this barrier to entry and scalability has been removed from these uh, thermosetting uh, materials. And so we've got a whole uh, product roadmap lawn lined up. We're going to launch our first generation uh, product this year. And that's going to be the first generation of thermoset stretchable film. That's going to be a substrate for printed electronics. Now, uh, there's a lot of uh, terms out there being bounced around in terms of uh, printed electronics, added manufacturing, stretchtronics, flexible hybrid electronics. But basically, the, the, the basic gist of this is that these uh, electronics, these circuit boards and other devices are made with additive uh, manufacturing uh, using uh, printing or other additive uh, processes to uh, make new form factors of electronics should uh, enable some very uh, nice cost advantages and also some form factor uh, advantages. So uh, maybe show a couple of quick things here. If this is all right, here's a, a very basic uh, printed electronic device. There you can see the uh, silver ink on the uh, stretchable film. And you can see that this could be conformed or used in just about any way you would like. Could uh, be very comfortable on your body. Uh, we can modify the film, the materials for aesthetics. Here's a, uh, here's a blue version of the film. I like to call this Panasonic blue because aesthetics are becoming important, increasingly important in electronics. Here is an example of a complete circuit board, a functional circuit board integrated into uh, textiles. And again, this is a Panasonic proof of concept uh, device, a sensor input output sensor that could get integrated into a, a shirt or other wearable device. We can add other functionality between different conductors. We can use silver-based composite conductors traditional copper conductors. In fact, one of the most exciting things we're working on is taking our polymer technology, our polymer film technology, and combining it with liquid metal to make uh, conductive circuits that can never fatigue or break. So that's, uh, that's down the road. It's in R&D stage now, but it's a very exciting uh, research that's coming along. Unfortunately, we can't disclose uh, very much detail about the types of products development or product development we're engaged in because we have NDAs with these companies and it wouldn't be uh, appropriate to share the uh, specifics of the devices they're developing using our materials. But we can share a lot of details about the materials itself. And then, of course, your imagination can run wild about uh, where you think uh, stretchable, conformable, pliable, wearable electronics might be used in, in your everyday life or things that you dream about or think about. Now, I'd like to go into some of the questions I commonly get when I talk to people about our stretchable circuit materials. Um, one that comes up quite a bit is a question about biocompatibility. And, and that's a totally reasonable question, right? If you're going to make medical devices or uh, on-skin devices, uh, certainly we're not doing implantable devices, but things that are going to be worn on the body or touching the skin. Uh, you want to make sure that it's not going to be irritating or have issues with the skin. And so uh, to that end, we have tested the first generation of film for biocompatibility and it's, test, it's passed those tests without any issue. There appears to be no uh, irritation or skin sensitivity with this material. So that's, that's a good start and we'll continue to do that type of testing for the products that will come out and may come in contact with your skin. Another question I get, particularly from manufacturers, is what type of equipment do I need to have on hand or to buy or to use for uh, to make uh, circuitry with 
your materials? And the basic answer is really one of the big advantages we have is the path to scalability doesn't require any specialized equipment. You may need to adjust your processes, but basically uh, regular uh, PCB manufacturing equipment or screen printing for additive electronics works just fine on our substrate. And in fact, uh, component mounting uh, can be done through uh, conventional SMT processes. So we really believe this not having to buy new equipment will help with uh, scalability and manufacturers, uh, manufacturing companies implement this material. Another question that I commonly get about, uh, especially about this first generation film, is what form factors will it be delivered in? And our uh, initial product is going to be delivered in rolls. These will be rolls that are about 100 meters long, and then customers can either slit that roll or cut various shapes out of that roll as they need. Uh, we figure that the, using roll would be compatible with roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing processes, which are the high volume manufacturing processes. However, if customers need sheets or smaller form factors, uh, they can certainly cut their rolls down to the size and shape they need, or we can do that for them. A question I receive quite often is, can we customize these materials? Uh, if the current material, the Gen 1 material, isn't exactly what we need, either it needs to be a different thickness or a different color, or perhaps the modulus needs to be changed a little bit, can we modify these products to meet a customer's needs? The short answer is yes. These are internally developed core products for Panasonic. We have the expertise and we know which levers to pull to modify these products to either make changes to the aesthetics, perhaps lower the modulus, make it softer or make it a little firmer, or change the thickness of the film. We can certainly uh, discuss these with customers are happy to work on these types of projects. So, as I mentioned, we're launching our first product uh, this year. Uh, that'll be coming out, we anticipate, in the April timeframe. And uh, that's going to be followed by future generations of uh, products that we believe are going to enable uh, manufacturers to do uh, many great things in terms of stretchable, conformable, pliable electronics. So I've really enjoyed giving you a peek under the hood at the technologies we're developing here at Panasonic. And what I'd like to do is invite you, if you're working in the area of printed electronics, conformable electronics, wearables, uh, in mold electronics, we'd love to hear from you, love to have the opportunity to work with you and together develop uh, products and technologies that are going to improve people's lives.